hop. Let's go and get ready to worship. Here we go.
your praise this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. Let's go. I was breathing, but not alive. And all my failures I tried to hide. It was my tune till I met you. Do you? 
Jesus, we love you so much. We love you, Jesus. There's no one greater, no one worthy of our praise, our adoration, our love. God, I could just stand here with the people of God singing whoa, whoa, whoa all day. <laughs> it's beautiful how Jesus has reached into so many lives that are here today when they were farthest from God. And he reached into their lives and he touched them and he awakened them and he brought them into relationship with him. If you're here today and you feel like you're far from God, we've all been. But God loved so loved the world he gave his only begotten son. You see, Jesus came for people like you and me to find you at the farthest reaches and say, you know what? You were created to be in relationship with a real and living God. Son and daughter, follow me. I'll bring you into relationship. Father, we just thank you this morning for our time together and your Holy Spirit that's here. And we just declare a love for Jesus, the one who gave his life for humanity, yet did not stay in the grave, but rose again and seated at the right hand of the Father that we might one day see him face to face. <laughs> Praise you, Jesus. And we give you all the glory and honor, not only of our praise, but our life. It's the one thing that we have the, the capability to give or not give. And Jesus, I pray that all of us here would turn to you and give our lives to you. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a shout offering. He's worthy. Before you take your seats today, I want you to find someone behind you or in front of you or across the room if you'd like and say hello this morning. Praise the Lord. There's no better place to be than in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Man, I, I hate missing church, mostly because I don't want to miss what God is doing, not only in my life, but in the lives of everyone that gathers under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I'm excited for what God has for us today. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I want to introduce myself. I am Pastor Jesse. I want to welcome you here. Welcome you to spend your Sunday morning with us. I want to welcome those also joining us online as well. So glad you're tuning in. I believe God has something for you this morning. Uh, the brick walls are not hindered or do not hinder the Holy Spirit. And as we preach the Word of God, as the Word of God is preached, as you join in with worship and praise with fellow saints, I promise you God is going to meet you right where you are at. Uh, wherever you are. So I'm excited for you guys as well today. Uh, before we get into uh, the message that I have for us this morning, uh, I do have a few announcements. If I can find them, there we go. Uh, we do have uh, basic. Uh, we'll be meeting. That's our college ministry. If you're a college student, come on out here Mondays at 7, uh, and they'll be meeting right here, right here in the foyer. So if you're a college student or know a college student, let them know and come on out here to the Plattsburgh House of Prayer Monday at 7. Also, there is prayer and worship this Tuesday. So we're excited for that. So uh, I do want to just remind you that the, the most glorious thing that God gave humanity when he created them was the ability to commune with God. 
Amen. And, and it's our privilege to gather together and to pray and to seek God's face and ask him to move not only in our friends, our families, uh, and our communities, but the world. Amen. So uh, come on out. That'll be uh, Tuesday from 7 to 8. It's only an hour. Come on out and and worship with us and pray with us. Amen. We also have youth that'll be meeting this Wednesday at seven. So if you are a parent of a teen or know a teen, send them on out to uh, to, to hear the Plattsburgh House of Prayer from seven to eight thirty. Uh, we, we have a fun time together, so we're looking forward to that. Also, one of the things that I, I did talk about last week was Partner for Impact. How many remember me talking about Partner for Impact? So those are quite a few of us do. Uh, Partner for Impact is one of the things that we do for our college students that uh, we we love to have the opportunity to sow into college students' lives, right? To, to somehow sow into them where they're growing in their faith and not declining in their faith while they're here at campus. So one of the things that we do is we do this thing called Partner for Impact where we actually uh, – ask you to partner with us financially to send some students uh, to a conference in Rochester. And there's such a great impact that happens at the col in, in the college students' lives at that place. We, we, we're, we think it's so important to do what we can to get them there. Amen? Can I say it that way? Awesome. So uh, we do have that coming up. And I'm actually going to ask Merritt. He's the uh, director of our basic students. And he's going to share a little bit of, on, about the impact uh, that BasicCon has on the college students. Thanks, Pastor Jesse. Yeah, so I'm Merritt, and with my beautiful wife, Jamie, over there, we are the advisors. Yeah, she, she deserves 90% of the applause. I just kind of show up. Um, yeah, so Partner for Impact, the Basicon, it is powerful. All right, so I'm just proud of that. I was, I was thinking, how can I get everyone here to understand? So just imagine, put yourselves back to when you were 18, 20, 22 years old. Some of us has to go a ways far back. April, right? I mean... You know what I'm saying? You got to really dig back in the brain to think back then. All right. I was thinking, who can I pick on? I'm like, April's fun to pick on. I'll, I'll pretend that she's old. She's kind of old, but so am I. Um, so put yourself back in that age, all right? And then think about that worship we just had. That was awesome. That was really good worship, right? I mean, really, really good. Uh, so you're in a room, if you're a college student, you're in a room with 200, 300, 400 students your age, people going through the same stuff you're going through, studying the same thing you're studying, same struggles, same temptations. Same things that are going on in you. Like when you're sitting there, you're like, oh my gosh, should I even be here? Like, I'm, I've been doing this. I've, I'm struggling with this. Do I deserve to be here? And you're looking around and you see people in the same place that you are, worshiping just like we were, but it's a room packed full of people that you can see eye to eye with. Their hands are up. They're praying. They're singing. They're crying. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And so we tried to get every student. We were like, we really would love every student to be able to go. Some of them with their studies, they can and can't go. But this semester, we have 16 students going, which is an absolute blessing. That's awesome. <laughs> yep, that's a really good group going down. So, so and we do ask that the students, we you know, put a little skin in the game as well. So they do pay a deposit. So the students are paying a little bit themselves. What we need is that extra from you guys just to help get us there. Um, the conference isn't, isn't cheap. It has unfortunately gone up a little bit over the years like everything else has. Um, so we just ask that you guys pray about it. I, I understand like you know, dollars are tight for everybody. But pray about it. And if you can financially, please think about partnering for Impact, getting these students and giving that opportunity to be able to worship in a place where they just feel so comfortable, where they can just be themselves, where they can kind of pour their hearts out in places where maybe other times they're a little bit shy, but there for some reason, God just really, Holy Spirit moves in that place and lives are 100% changed. We see it on a daily basis whenever we have our basic meetings. I know you guys don't get to see it maybe during our basic Sundays when, when Pastor Jesse's kind enough to let us hijack a Sunday. You guys get a small glimpse of it, but we get to see the actual impact that's in their lives from semester to semester and how they really change in Basicon is such a huge, huge impact on that. So thank you, Pastor Jesse, for letting me talk. Please, guys, pray about it. if you can't financially give just pray and, and for basic and for basic on and just kind of just pray that the holy spirit move that hearts would be softened that minds would be opened and that these college students would change because not only on campus but then they're going to go to other places and so the fire that the holy spirit puts them in here they can take to wherever they're going to go and we can just light this whole world on fire right all right so thank you guys very very much Praise the Lord. Yeah, so if, if you are, if you really feel the nudging of God to, uh, to partner uh, in this endeavor, that we have sign-up sheets out in the foyer, so you can go out there in the foyer and find one of those tables out there, and it's going to have a sheet that's labeled Partner for Impact. And what we would love for you to do is get your name and information on there and how much you're willing to give, uh, just so we have an amount that we know what we're working with. Uh, 
and, uh, and, and do that. Uh, there's also a text to give right there. You can text uh, partner and the amount to 84321. Uh, you can give that way as well. Uh, but uh, so yeah, so sign up and over the next couple weeks, uh, just give the amount that you said you were gonna give, uh, that we do get your information. So that way, if, if you forget, I can give you a call and say, hey, uh, we haven't seen that uh, donation. So we'd love to, to have you give that. But uh, if you're like me, uh, I, I forget a lot of things. If it doesn't go on my phone, it doesn't happen. Anybody else like that? <laughs> if it doesn't, it's not in there, it's not gonna happen. So, uh, but we're, we're so blessed. We're so blessed to have a congregation that just loves to give. Uh, we just serve such a generous God, don't we? Amen. Uh, and one of the things I believe is when we come and encounter Jesus Christ and our lives are transformed from the inside out, what we do is our, our DNA is actually changed. All right, and, and it's, it's touched by God, and it, and it brings us in a relationship with Him, and we literally become the children of God, and our DNA becomes uh, generous, just like God is, Amen. And that's one of the ways that we find joy in walking with God is just being generous with what God has done in our lives, Amen. So, praise the Lord. Uh, so sign up for that if you can, and uh, we're excited to see what happens with the the students. And then, Basic Sunday, like He said, is usually a, a week or two after the the basic con event, and we'll hear from them uh, at that time. So uh, I do want to get into uh, the series that we kind of started, I think, in September, uh, and then we switched to a different series, and we're going to jump back into that series that we started, and it's really the, the book of Mark. Uh, so let's pray before we get into that real quick. Father God, I thank you for today. I thank you for everyone that's here. I thank you for your word, God, that ignites our heart. It's not just uh, like any other book, it's not just kind of black and uh, black ink on a white piece of paper, God. It's the, the very oracles, the breath of God, Paul calls it. And it's this very breath as we read it, it gets into us, God, and it, it transforms us and it changes us and it sets us free. There's power in it, God. And I pray that we would experience that spirit of might today as we hear your word. I pray that you would pour out a, a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Jesus Christ to enlighten the eyes of our heart as we dive into the word of God and allow your Holy Spirit to really minister to us today. I pray this all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 All right. So if you were with us back in September, you're going to know uh, that we started a series called The Book of Mark, Jesus the Servant Leader. And I kind of have this anchor verse for us that kind of uh, epitomizes Jesus as the servant leader. And that's Mark chapter 10, verse 45. And we're going to have it on the screen for you. And it reads this, for even the Son of Man, that's Jesus, even for the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And we, we started this series called the book of Mark, Jesus the Servant Leader, because even though there's a lot of similarities with the other Gospels, uh, Matthew, Mark, uh, Matthew, Luke, and John, even though there's similarities uh, within each of these Gospels that kind of correspond with each other, the reality is each Gospel kind of expresses Jesus in a different way. And it's done that way on purpose so we can kind of get a broader view of what Jesus is and what he's like, Right? So if we were to kind of go to the, the, the gospel of Matthew, the book of Matthew, and, and if you were to read through it, you could kind of maybe title it Jesus, the King of the Jews. Because what Matthew was doing throughout the book of, uh, throughout the gospel was emphasizing Jesus's messianic leadership, kingship uh, to, the, to the Jewish people. If we were to open the, the gospel of Luke and we began to read through that, we would come away with maybe the title Jesus, the Son of Man. Because really Luke is, is written to emphasize Jesus as the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world, the one that would give his life for all humanity. And if you were to go to the book of John or the gospel of John and you read through that, you would see or maybe come away with the title, the Son of God, the power of God. Because John is really written to reveal Jesus' divine nature, his divine nature. And as the title suggests here in the, in the book of Mark, Mark emphasizes Jesus as the perfect servant leader. Amen. So as we go through the, the gospel of Mark, it's important for us to, to see Jesus, who is the son of God, as the servant leader that he is. 
right, and what it means for us to follow in his footsteps. See, the gospel reveals the very nature and who Jesus is, and it's not just to wow us. It's actually an invitation for us to begin to follow and to live out what Jesus displayed for us through the power of his transforming power in our lives. Amen? Uh, so we really want to l- read this and, and learn and, and look of how we can follow in his footsteps. In fact, if we just kind of go to Philippians 2, 5, if you're taking notes, you can write that down, Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, and, and listen to what Paul writes. He says, have this mind among yourselves. In other words, have this same attitude or really, really try to embrace this. Get a hold of it. Have this same mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. He reveals it to you through Christ, who though was in the form of God, meaning he is God. Though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself. In other words, he did not use his divinity. He became just like man. He emptied himself by taking the form of a servant. Right? So the book of Mark is, is one of the ways God uses to kind of open the eyes of our hearts to a life of impact, significance, and even greatness through being a servant like Jesus. Right? Jesus is one of the, the, the greatest men of all time throughout history. Right? I mean, even People Magazine declares him to be the most influential person in all of history. He, he achieved greatness. And one of the things we confuse is how the world achieves greatness and how Jesus did it. And how Jesus did it was totally opposite of how the world does it. Jesus achieved greatness by being the greatest servant of them all. And he invites us into that same life, right? So as we jump back into the book of Mark, and if you'd like to see some of the things we talked about earlier in the first chapter, uh, you can go back and and find our uh, podcast or uh, our Facebook page, uh, our YouTube channel, or even on our website. You can find those uh, sermons before and kind of go through and listen to those. But today, as we jump back into the book of Mark, we're going to find ourselves in Mark chapter 1, verse 21. Mark chapter 1, verse 21. And here uh, we see the fishermen, Simon, Peter, Andrew, and James, and John. They really have just left left everything to follow Jesus, right? We just finish up with scripture saying they, they, they left it all behind. They left their, the, the, whether it was income or, or fame or influence or, or money or, or whatever it might be, even relationships, they left those behind and chose to follow Jesus. And it says, and they went to Capernaum. So let's go there now to Mark chapter 1, verse 21. And let's read it. And it reads this, and it says, and they went into Capernaum, and that's Jesus and the disciples that were following him. They went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and was teaching. Now, in this first verse, I just want to give you a little bit of history. Synagogues came into existence when the Jews, were, or the Israelites really, were brought into, because they weren't known as Jews until after the Babylonian exile, but the Israelites were brought into Babylon, Babylon as exiles from their homeland. And all of a sudden, the, the, the Israelites began to gather, a group of people gathered together because of their faith, uh, and it was called a synagogue, right? It's called a synagogue. And that word synagogue originally described the group of people, but later it became associated with the building where they met. The building where they met. Does that sound familiar? Right? See, the word church has, a, has, been a, has seen a, a similar evolution, Right? Uh, that word church means ecclesia, means a gathering of the saints, the gathering of God's people, meaning a group of people. But now it's kind of associated with just a building, right? We think of, well, what church do you go to rather than what church are you, <laughs> right? So synagogue was really the, meant the gathering of the people. It really became kind of the idea of where they met. Now we see one of the first things he did in Capernaum when Jesus arrived, was go to a synagogue on the Sabbath. Now, being a God-fearing Jew, he would have, that's what he would have done, right? In other words, it was Sunday. It was Sunday morning, and he went to church, right? That's what Jesus did. That's what it's saying there. It was Sunday, and he went to church. But it also says he didn't only just go to church. It says he was teaching. 
He was teaching. And it really would have been customary at the time for, for the leaders of the local synagogue to, to recognize visiting teachers and give them an opportunity to speak to the congregation. That was kind of the, the custom of the time, which just by that one verse kind of tells us by this time Jesus was at least recognized as a teacher of God's word and recognized enough for when he came, they were able to or felt comfortable enough to ask him to, to share God's word with the congregation. And Jesus used this platform really everywhere he went in his traveling ministry, speaking in synagogues every town and every city on every Sunday. Uh, and in fact, if we skip ahead to verse 39, I don't have it on the screen, but it tells us he went throughout all of Galilee preaching in their synagogues. But what made Jesus different from any other teacher, any other preacher or rabbi, was that when Jesus taught, he taught as one having authority. He taught as one having authority. Just listen to what it says in, in Mark 1.22, if we continue on reading. And it says, and they were astonished at his teaching. As Jesus kind of opened the word and, and began to teach the word of God, it says they were astonished at his teaching. And one of the things that you're going to find uh, with Mark as he writes the gospel of Mark is he says Jesus taught here and Jesus taught there and Jesus was teaching at this place and that place. But Mark rarely ever says what Jesus was actually teaching, which can be frustrating for some of us, but we do find it in some of the other gospels. But Mark doesn't really highlight what he was teaching. What Mark often does is he ref references how the people responded. And here it says, and they were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one who had authority and not as the scribes. It was, his, it was Jesus' great authority that impressed people. And it was because he was not a mere scribe, but he was a prophet. He wasn't just a mere teacher, he was a prophet. And in fact, he was the greatest prophet of them all. He was the son of God. The son of God. You see, Jesus proclaimed revelation directly from God as a prophet. Right? A prophet speaks for God. So Jesus proclaimed revelation from God as a prophet rather than just really just kind of interpreting former revelations from other teachers prior to him. Right? Right? See, scribes would have kind of uh, quoted well-known rabbis, and from their quotes and their authority, they would, they would teach what those previous rabbis have taught. But Jesus would say things like, but I say to you. How many remember those? Right? There's a popular thing called the Sermon on the Mount. Right? And that's a great example. In Matthew 5, 27, Jesus says, you have heard it said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent commits adultery with her in his heart. You see, Jesus wasn't just teaching. He was declaring. You see, Jesus spoke that way because he had authority. He had authority. Jesus himself was the word of God. Jesus himself was the nature and the heart of the word that we read today. As we read God's word, if we pick up that Bible and we flip through the pages, we're reading Jesus. Right? John 1.1 John 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And the word was God. Now that kind of blows my mind a little bit to try to wrap my head around that, right? It, it's hard to, but it, it declares it. He was... In, he was in the beginning, the Word was in the beginning, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And who was that? Jesus. Jesus. So Jesus spoke with authority on, on the Word because he is the Word. And this in itself amazed people time and time again. Wherever he went, it astonished people of how he spoke and declared the word of God. But in the next handful of verses, Jesus also shows his authority. So he just didn't show up speaking with authority. He shows 
his authority. So let's keep reading in, in Mark chapter 1, verse 23. And it goes on, and we're going to read to verse 28 if you're taking notes or following along. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice came out of him. And they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. Let's go back and kind of just begin to unpack from verse 23 on. Right, we see an outburst from a man in the congregation that interrupted the teaching that Jesus was doing because he was under the influence of a demonic spirit. Now, the Jews would have been familiar with demonic spirits, and they would refer to them as evil or unclean spirits, just like Mark does here, right? He says, is a man with an unclean spirit? And the man cried out, but it was really the demon speaking through him. And we know this because Jesus replied not to the man, but he replied to the demon. But what I want to point out is in what the demon actually said, because that's where I think the, the, the meat of the, the teaching is here. And what the demon said. He said, have you come to destroy us? It was one of the first things he said. Have you come to destroy us? You see, this, this phrase isn't so much a question as it is a statement. And if you would have to translate it and write it, you could have easily wrote it as, You've, you have come to destroy us. So we see the demon, it recognized Jesus. But not only did he recognize Jesus, the demon also recognized Jesus as his judge. Right? As his judge. That Jesus was here and had the right and the authority to judge him. This showed Jesus' great authority. And by calling him the Holy One of God, the demon was really doing two things. He was testifying of Jesus' anointing and he was testifying of Jesus' divinity. You see, the Holy One of God, the demon calls him the Holy One of God. The Holy One of God refers to uh, the long-awaited Messiah. The Holy One of God. The Messiah, the one that is to come. The anointed one of God. You see, the demons recognized his empowerment by the Holy Spirit. That he wasn't just a man. And that he wasn't just deity under the flesh, but he was anointed. And he was anointed with the Holy Spirit, empowered by the Holy Spirit, which is the enemy of all unclean spirits. But the Holy One of God also implies his belief in Jesus as deity, the Son of God. If you've ever read in the book of James, and I encourage you to read the book of James, there's a lot of common sense stuff in there. But in the book of James, in chapter 2, 19, James says this, if you believe that, that there is one God, that's good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. And we see here that the demons, they know Jesus is God. They know he is. They know he created the whole world. They know his mission, and they know he's judge of everything. And what James is saying, if, if you think God is real and, and, and you say God is, is Lord, the demons do too. They know who Jesus is. They know who God is. They believe in Jesus. But what James, I think, is trying to bring to the surface here is faith isn't believing in Jesus because demons believe. Faith is following Jesus. And obeying his teachings. That's the difference. Demons know who he is. The people of God follow who he is. So the demon said, you're the holy one of God. It implies their belief in Jesus' deity. The title holy one was actually a popular title that 
was found throughout the, the Hebrew Bible of the time. In fact, the prophet Isaiah called God the Holy One about 30 times, if you want to do a word search. Now, people in the New Testament, they referred to Jesus as Lord, Teacher, Son of David, and even Master. But the demons called him the Holy One of God, the Son of God, the Son of the Most High. An example that we're, we're going to see here in Mark is Mark 3, verse 11, where it says, And whenever unclean spirits saw him, they fell down and cried out, You are the Son of God. They can't help but see the authority and the deity and the divinity and the perfect holiness of Jesus. But the power to cast the demon out came from one place, the person of the Holy Spirit, right? Basic theology reveals that Jesus is sinless because he is God, right? Jesus could be the ultimate sacrifice for all of humanity because he was perfectly sinless. Why was he perfectly sinless? Because he was God. But Jesus was also fully man. And why was he fully man? Because he refused to use the power of his divinity. He relied completely and utterly on the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Guess what we have to do? Because no one's going to call you God anytime soon. Right? Demons aren't going to fall and, and say, oh, the son of God, Jesse. <laughs> Sometimes I, I feel that's the way it should be. <laughs> but thankfully, I don't get that title. If demons are going to feel and tremble over anything, it's going to be because you're anointed by the person of the Holy Spirit. You see, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit <clears throat> is what gave Jesus the authority to cast out this demon. But one of the things I want you to notice is Jesus didn't need some kind of magical formula or object to exercise the demon, right? Jesus didn't, he didn't need holy water. He didn't need a, a cross in his hand. Come out! How many have seen the movie Exorcist? <laughs> it's an old one. <laughs> Right? Jesus didn't need to have holy water or a cross in his hand. He didn't have to, to chant some kind of scripture that's found in the word of God. He simply ordered it to be quiet and to leave the man, and it obeyed. And the people's reaction to this was an important part of Mark's uh, narrative that he was kind of revealing to us. That they were amazed at this unique demonstration of authority by word and deed. Symbolizing that this Jesus, he wasn't just a teacher. He wasn't even just a prophet. He was the Messiah, the Son of God, come to save the world. And the result of this miracle was that people all over that part of Galilee heard about Jesus. See, Jesus spoke with authority, and Jesus showed his authority as the Son of God. But this is the thought I want to leave us with, and if I can have uh, Jason come on up. This is the thought I want to leave us with. That the same Holy Spirit that anointed Jesus now lives in those who believe in Jesus. Come on. In fact, Mark 16, 17 says, and these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. Not because you're deserving or undeserving. Not because you're God in any way. You will drive out demons because he gives all who believes in him and follow him the gift of the Holy Spirit. In fact, Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, Do you not know 
that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you. Come on. Who is in you, whom you have received from God. The same Holy Spirit that led Jesus to live a life that glorified God, that, that cast out demons and, and healed the sick. This same Holy Spirit will do the same for you and in you if you surrender to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. In fact, Acts 1.8 reads this, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Come on. He has that for you. It's his gift to you. It's his down payment of what's to come. The gift of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus, he turns to his people and he says, you'll, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Not to be obnoxious at work or with family and friends. Not to think you're better than somebody else. For what? And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Can I say something? If you're not walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, you're really missing out on life. Come on. Some of you have been walking this bland life. This been buying tickets to the struggle bus. <laughs> Come on. You've just been doing life and doing things and trying to find some kind of peace or happiness and it never really works out and you jump from either relation to relationship or job to job or thing to thing or vacation to vacation and man, life isn't working out and, and you're just living this stale life. I want to tell you something. Jesus didn't die and he wasn't raised from the dead so that you could just walk through life that way. Jesus said, it's imperative that I go. I know I'm going to miss you guys. I'm going to miss seeing you face to face and, and having dinner with you guys and celebrating and laughing and, and just loving on you guys and allowing you to love us. But I, it's imperative that I go because there's coming something so much better. This anointing, this anointing that's on my life is meant to be on your life too so that you carry this very same anointing, this very same power of the Holy Spirit, not just to transform your life, but to transform every life around you, wherever you go. The grocery store seems boring until you walk in with the power of the Holy Spirit. PTA meetings seem boring until you walk in with the anointing of the person of the Holy Spirit. That's the life you're meant to live. I want you to get so sick of what life is without the Holy Spirit that you can't help crave and long for the person of the Holy Spirit in your life. As we end today, I'm just going to, I'm going to pray for that. I'm going to pray for a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then we're going to pray for a couple friends of mine and a couple friends of yours. there's a, a bittersweet moment coming. Ever wonder why we call Good Friday Good Friday? Right? Jesus is tortured and he's put on that cross and he dies. We call that Good Friday. 
because it was salvation for humanity, right? We have some friends that are leaving. They're moving away, and it's bittersweet. They've been such good friends. But we know God's got some good things for them where they're going. So let's stand. I want to pray. I want to pray for the Holy Spirit to come and invade your life and I want to pray that you would one if you haven't received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior if you've never turned to him and and bent your knee and said God forgive me my sins and you can have it all I promise from today this day forward I'll follow you all the days of my life I need a Savior and you're it Jesus and I will make you Lord of my life forever you have an opportunity to do that right now in your seat And then what I want to do is pray for the release of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the gift that Jesus has for you to carry, to have living inside of you, to walk around, to be the witnesses for Jesus Christ. So let's bow our heads. Father, I pray this now. I pray that those who walked in this place and didn't really know there was a Holy Spirit for them, God, I pray that even now their faith would be ignited. God, that they would recognize that when they said yes to you, Jesus, they said yes to the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit now lives in them. It united him itself, himself with, with them, Lord Jesus, and made them a new creation in Christ Jesus. God, I pray that their eyes and ears would be opened to the power and the anointing and the, lead, the leadership and yes, even the voice of the Holy Spirit, which is God's Word. God, I pray for a fresh anointing, a fresh baptism for those, Father, who who've maybe forgot about it or left it behind or just haven't been listening and allowing Him to lead. God, I pray that today would be the day that we just sense the Holy Spirit in our lives, leading us, guiding us to walk in not only power, but a life that glorifies Jesus Christ wherever we go. If that's you this morning and you're saying, I just, either I need the Holy Spirit or maybe you're like, I want more of the Holy Spirit. Or even if you're like, hey, I want to continue in walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. I want you to to get your hand up. And it's not so much that I see it, it's that God sees it. Because I just believe there's an act of faith in here, in this place, this morning. That says, Jesus, I need your Holy Spirit. I want to, to carry that anointing, that Holy Spirit into the places that I go. And into the relationships that I am in. And into even my marriage. Thank you, Jesus. God, you see those hands. Father, I pray for a release, a fresh release of your Holy Spirit, God. Father, I pray for a fresh reminder of who you are, who the Holy Spirit is to them, friend, comforter, leader, and guide, and power, and protector, and friend. Come, Holy Spirit. Anoint afresh. Anoint all of us afresh. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Now, what I want to do is I want to invite Mark and Sarah Chucky up. And I'll probably cry just to give you a warning. I'm going to have our elders come up too. If we can get our elders. These two are a faithful couple. And uh, we were excited to have them a part of our family for a while. But they're going to be moving to Pennsylvania, right? Yeah. Pennsylvania, God's leading them down there. And we're just excited for what God's going to do. God's got some good things in store for them. Uh, but these two are, they're part of our dream team. They serve here at, at P-Hop, and they've been good friends of mine and so many, uh, and to so many of us here in this place today. And like I said, it, it's bittersweet to see you go, but I just really wanted to pray with you and just anoint you afresh and, and just honor you for being 
the kind of people of God that you are. Amen. Uh, so many lives have, have been touched and even salvations in this place uh, has taken place because of you two serving in the capacity that you have and your willingness to give Jesus Christ your lives. Uh, so let's all just pray with them. If you'll pray with me in a way or uh, if you feel comfortable, just extend your hands uh, to them. Father God, I thank you for, for Mark and Sarah. God, I thank you for who they are. God, I thank you for the gifts and the talents that you've given each one of them, God. And I thank you, Father, for the strength of faith that you've placed within them, God. And I pray, Father, for the, the faith that has grown as they gone, have gone through circumstances that have not been easy. But you held their hand through it all, and you still hold it, God. And their faith has grown and will continue to grow. These are gifted and strong people in the Lord. But Father, we also thank you for bringing them into our lives, to making them our friends and our family. Giving them a place to speak into our lives and encourage us and give us strength and hope when we needed it. And God, so we in turn pray and Ask for you to give them strength and hope in this next leg of their journey, God. Father, we bless them as they go. We honor them for their commitment to you and your church in this family, God. We just honor them, honor them, honor them, God. And we ask that you would bless their going, that you would anoint their feet, Father, that you would anoint the vehicle that they're in, that you would have already pre- uh, predetermined and anointed the place where they'll be living, God, that they would sense the presence of Jesus Christ, God, that they, they would know that there's a church family in Plattsburgh, New York, that loves them and is praying for them, God, that is raising a vanguard around them as a family and around their home, Lord Jesus, that they would experience what, just what we talked about, the anointing of the Holy Spirit in just such a way, God, Father, that it washes over them and cleanse them every day anew for a new day, Lord Jesus. God, I pray that you would break off any fears and any doubts that you've placed in their head is was this the right move is this the move of God and the Lord would say this is my hand leading and guiding you oh I've given you divine wisdom for so many things and I want you to keep using that divine wisdom in your lives but I have ordered your steps says the Lord and I bring you down there in Jesus mighty name to be a witness to carry the fire of the Lord to those around you and you there you will see many saved you'll see lives come to me simply because you love love me more than anything else and you're willing to do my word says the Lord. You're willing to do what I ask you to do. Father, I pray for that fresh anointing over their lives, God, and in their mouths, Lord Jesus. Father, I pray you would anoint their, 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 their hearts with the word of God and that their speech would bring glory to Jesus, God. And it would change the atmosphere where they're going. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to miss you guys. Find these guys. Give them a hug. And uh, let them know how much you appreciate them. I love you guys. We're going to miss you. But we're glad you have, we have you in our lives. Amen. You guys can be seated. Praise you, Jesus. Church life is tough sometimes. <laughs> Saying goodbye to good friends. But it won't be forever. Amen. So our music team, they're going to play us off. And uh, they're gonna one final worship song. And our prayer team is going to come up after. And if you need prayer for anything, come on up and see them. If you need prayer, even just encouragement in the Holy Spirit in your life, come see them. They're going to pray with you and encourage you. But know this, man. God has anointed you with the Holy Spirit to live a life that glorifies him. One of the things I always say is you have one life to live. No do-overs. There's no spawn points. You only get one. One life. Man, live it for him. Let the Holy Spirit anoint you. And you'll never ever be disappointed. Amen. God bless. Till next week. Worship team.
to those who are. 